Niawe Sikan, everyone. I am President-elect Mishana Goman from the Tanawanda Band of Seneca, and I am currently living in Seneca Territory and working at the University of Buffalo to continue the legacy of those who fought for an Indigenous Studies Department that asserted our place in and with the world. The freedom to learn speaks to me deeply as someone whose Tonawanda Seneca grandmother attended Thomas Indian School, a place where learning was not the emphasis, but assimilation, and whose great Anishinaabe great grandmother became separated from her community as well through a policy that made illegal the cores of our being. These places sought to ensure the erasure of learning our histories, languages, cultures, and thus our deep relationships to our territories. It would impact our feelings towards education for generations. This history of boarding schools did not succeed, but did impact our communities and relationships immensely. Through the strength of movements in the 60s and the 70s that fought for the very programs that are looking to be eradicated today, um, such as survival and language schools, our now elders fought to bring home the stolen generations, whole languages, dances, and ways of being in the world, all acts of self-determination that also renewed the assertion of sovereignty. The current attacks on our, our Black, Indigenous, Latinx, and LGBTQ2 two-spirit two relatives is rooted in these past atrocities in relation to education. But the lingering effect of the entrenched effort to erase our history is manifested also in the present materially in the everyday lives of those who embody these histories. In not teaching our histories, in not teaching or researching the living legacies of racial inequality and genocide, they are letting a divisive issue reproduce these atrocities. While Native children are no longer being forced into boarding schools, they do find themselves at a higher proportional rate into the pipeline. In fact, some have argued that more, more Native children have faced violence in the pipeline of child welfare than they did within the boarding schools. There's more numbers. It is still rare for many Native children to see themselves present in a book or even in a positive way outside of stereotypes or speaking to our desks. This manifests itself in social interactions between different peoples, such as we saw in a recent case at a local lacrosse game in Western New York, where the predominantly Seneca team faced racial stereotypes, called animals, and spoken to in racial slurs from the stands. This brazenness was felt by all. Our children facing these violences speaks to a climate of ignorance, which will not be solved by avoiding race or avoiding the ways that this has been manifested in education. This is just one recent incident of out of hundreds that go unreported in our territories and in the lives of Black, Latinx, refugee, and Indigenous folks that make up the fabric of Western New York. Sometimes the dealing with hatred comes too late, as we saw in the mass shooting at Tops in the Black neighborhood of Buffalo, in a store that activists worked to obtain to fight the racism and food sourcing that so often exist in inner cities. These are violences on different scales, but linked through an entrenchment of an education system that enab enables racist attitudes to continue. Education can also be that which shows these connections and can undo some of that damage. The strides that have been made to diversify the stories of the U.S. have not made us weaker. In fact, it has made us stronger. The turn to examining Black and Indigenous life or other forms of study that have left people out of stories is necessary to creation and invention and living together in productive ways. Valuing histories and stories strengthens everyone. 
as I confront the small stories of my grandmother um, and her experience within boarding schools and connecting those with others in my generation, I know it strengthens me and my children, my family, my community, and the students I teach and guide in critical thinking. It, in fact, impacts all of us in our future generations and is necessary to education. Nyawai.